Welcome to Coffee with Kupke, a production of St. Paul Inside the Walls. Here on Coffee with Kupke, we grab a cup of coffee, at least we're claiming this is coffee. We sit with Monsignor Kupke, Raymond Kupke, the pastor of St. Anthony's in Hawthorne, professor at Immaculate Conception Seminary, diocesan archivist. We sit with Monsignor Kupke to delve into the history of Catholicism in the Diocese of Patterson. My name is Father Paul Manning. I am the vicar for evangelization for the Diocese of Patterson. And here I am with Monsignor Kupke. So grab your cup of coffee and let's jump right in. I'm going to take a sip. Monsignor Kupke, last time we were together, we spoke at length about uh, Father Farmer, uh, who for 20-some years was the apostle to northern New Jersey. Uh, at some point, the, the presence of the church must have, have started to uh, stabilize, become more permanent. So can, can you just uh, situate us in uh, the, the growth of Catholicism, the establishment of Catholicism in the country, and then how, how it be, begins to be established in northern Jersey? Well, John Carroll, a Maryland ex-Jesuit, was appointed superior of the American mission in 1787. So one of his tasks was to give Rome some idea of what was over here because up to that point, we were under nobody's jurisdiction. And so religious orders were just feeling a, a missionary zeal and sending guys over? No, no, no. It was the only thing here were ex-Jesuits on the Maryland mission. Oh, okay. But once the American independence took hold, then you had not orders sending over people, but rather disgruntled members of religious orders in Europe feeling the pull of the new nation, you know, a, a fresh start. Yeah. They were just coming over on their own. Okay. Wow. So this began to be troublesome. Can I just, can I just ask, so uh, uh, is John Carroll a bishop at this point? No. He's a priest. He's a priest. And, and he's made superior of the American missions. And he, who, who appoints him superior of the... Rome. So is it the uh, propagation of the faith? Is it? Uh, it's a complicated story, but okay. basically, John Carroll, after the suppression of the Jesuits, John Carroll was in England. He, his order had been pulled out from underneath him, so he retires back to America to his mother's estate, which is basically Rock Creek Park in Washington today. Okay. <clears throat> But he does this just at the time of the stirrings of the American Revolution. Okay. So the Continental Congress has decided to send a delegation to Quebec to try and talk the Canadians into joining our side. So they send up Benjamin Franklin, mm. Charles Carroll, the only Catholic in the Continental Congress. Yes and William Paca of Maryland. So the Congress says to, uh, to Charles Carroll, you know, we understand that your cousin, the papist priest, has recently <laughs> returned to these shores. Why don't you ask him if he'll go too? So he goes on this four-man mission to Quebec. It's a, an utter disaster. Okay. Uh, the Canadians are not interested at all. Um, to the point where the Bishop of Quebec forbids John Carroll to say Mass in Quebec because he can't understand what he is, what a Catholic priest is doing with these anti-Catholic... Uh, Got it, yeah. However, uh, he becomes friendly with Benjamin Franklin on this trip. So they have a lot in common, and they become best buds. Wow. So a few years later... When Rome is trying to figure out what we have over here, who's over here, you know, they, the only country that the Holy See and the Americans have a connection to is France. 
So they suggest to the nuncio in Paris that he sound out the American minister in Paris uh, about what the guidelines would be in this new country. Um, would, would a new bishop have to be a native son? Uh, yeah. Would they insist on some role in the nomination? Yeah. You know, yeah. what... what and Franklin is the Franklin minister. Franklin is the minister yeah. in Paris. So okay. Franklin tells him, you got a guy over there. If yeah. you don't use him, you're crazy. Okay. So based on that, you know, this is the only name they've got. Uh, based on that, they appoint Carroll superior. You know, this is the lowest possible level. Of authority. And yeah. it begins something of a bad blood between Carroll and Rome because they forget they give Carol the faculty to confirm, but they forget to give him the faculty to consecrate chrism. <laughs> oh, boy. So he has to like write back to them and say, no, well, Could you thank send you, me but where or? am I supposed to get the chrism from? You know? So they say, all right, we forgot. You, know, you, you can do that, too. Now, Father Ray, this is a, a t totally minor issue, but when Father Farmer, is Father Farmer confirming people? No. No. Oh, man, I didn't think no. about that. There was no, no. faculty to confirm. No. no. Holy and mackerel. For no, all these years. No bishop between Quebec and basically Santiago de Cuba. Okay. Wow. But Farmer lived long enough, just at the very end of his career, he lived long enough to bring Carol up to West Milford to confirm. Wow. We can't stop talking about Father Farmer, can I know. we? <laughs> we know this because Carol... We have all of Carroll's correspondence. You know, four volumes have been published. And in one of the letters to one of his friends in England, he says, uh, I'm sorry to be getting back to you so late, but I've just returned from an apostolic journey to the upper counties of the Jerseys. Wow, wow. So no, no parish can be established. No, no. No, nothing. All right, so when do, when do, when do churches happen? But Farrell, Carroll becomes bishop then in 1789, first bishop of Baltimore. So this is the beginning. He, he writes back to Rome that, you know, they've just had the 1790 decennial census, the first census. In, so, in, the, in, the, in the new country. And this is just called mission territory at right. this point? Okay. So, you know, the census says there are three million people in what is now the United States of America. And Carroll guesstimates that 1% of that is Catholic, about 30,000 people, 20,000 of them in Maryland, okay, and the other 10,000 scattered all over the place. Oh, uh, I would have thought there were more at this point. No. But more start coming, you know, uh, starting with a little Irish immigration and a little German immigration, so by 188, Carroll's diocese is divided. He is made an archbishop, and four new dioceses are set up in Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and Bardstown, Kentucky. Which I was going to guess Kentucky. Today yeah. is Louisville. Yeah. So Say new, those four again. Uh, Boston, Philadelphia, New York, New York and Bardstown. Bardstown. Yeah. So New Jersey in this arrangement is divided between the New York Diocese and the Philadelphia Diocese. At some point, I think in your book, either you uh, say it or you quote somebody as saying that uh, New Jersey is a barrel tapped, tapped on both, both ends. ends. Yeah, what, what is that? That's Benjamin Franklin's son, oh. the last <laughs> royal governor of New Jersey. Okay. William Franklin. Trying to forge its identity between right. New York and Philadelphia. Which exists, as we know, yeah. you know, right down to the present. Giants or the Eagles, right? Right, yeah. exactly. But anyway, this or begins Sorry, some slowly, turkey. you know, slowly a some concern about New Jersey. So the first priest to be sent to New Jersey is sent to form a congregation in the new industrial city of Patterson. So this would be in 1820. And just, I missed that. A priest is sent a priest is by sent permanently by the Bishop of New York. And who's the Bishop of New York at this point? Uh, John Connolly, which is probably why our cathedral is St. John's. Okay. Interesting. All right. 
So at this point, the Diocese of New York uh, covers the entire state of New York and the eastern half of New Jersey. The eastern half? Right. Uh, oh, I got it. Yeah, and a diagonal yeah. line, yeah. So in this vast diocese of New York, they have eight priests, you know, three of them in the city, one in Albany, one in Schenectady, mm. one wandering up and down the Hudson River. <laughs> so the Bishop of New York then sends one of these eight to New Jersey, Father Richard Bolger. So he becomes the first priest and establishes a church in what is today downtown Patterson. Yes. Uh, basically, here, basically, there's a Peruvian restaurant, I think, down <laughs> on the corner of, uh, of Hamilton and Market or something like that. That's the site where the first church was. And uh, this is Father Richard Bulger. Bulger. B-U-L-G-E-R. Right. Right. Any relation to Whitey? No. Okay, sorry. Not that I know of. But, um, <laughs> you know, I'm always fond of telling Bishop Sweeney that at this point, there were no churches on Long Island at all. Oh, so wow. The following, Jersey's ahead of him. Right. The following year, the same bishop sends a priest on Long Island for the first time to establish a congregation in the village of Brooklyn. Okay. And that's yeah. where Sweeney was ordained a priest. That's now the Cathedral of Brooklyn. Okay. St. James. Wow. Yeah. So we have uh, um, a resident priest now in, in Jersey, Patterson, in right. Patterson. And gradually, you know, other churches are built. So, so Raymond, did you see the first parish, Father Ray, sorry, the first parish is St. John's. First parish, it depends on what you mean by parish. You know, uh, again, St. John's is not the first Catholic church opened in New Jersey. It is not the oldest building, but they are the first ones to have a resident pastor. Okay. So if okay. that's what you mean by parish... Well, gosh, I didn't know that yeah. I had to nuance it in yeah. such a way. So I always tell people that the oldest is St. Joseph's in West Milford, where Farmer operated. The oldest. Now, even though they did not build a church up there until 1829. So that's the oldest Catholic but it's community. the oldest Catholic congregation. I mean, they have sacramental records going back to the 1760s. But without a resident priest. But without a resident priest, right. Okay. And so then we get St. John's next? Right. Well, there, well, there's also a church in Trenton and in Newark. Yeah, we're not that interested in those. But no <laughs> resident priest there either. Okay. <laughs> St. John's is the first one with the resident priest. And, yeah. and interestingly, you know, they begin then to take over ministry in West Milford for mm. the remnants of farmers okay. community. So is Father uh, Bulger, is he, is he doing a lot of traveling now? He's only there very briefly. Okay. But that's the beginning. That's the first, you know, the first evidence of organized structure in what is today the Diocese of Patterson. Uh, the second uh, one... Ray, would he have been named a pastor? No. Okay. They didn't use it's that still- terminology. Uh, you know... The notion of canonical erection of a parish with boundaries and everything, that, that all comes, at least in New Jersey, much, much later. Okay. The second church within the diocese would be um, Madison. We are recording in Madison. We are recording in Madison. So in Madison, you have a group of refugee French families, basically a group of families that found themselves outside of France during the French Revolution. So they did not suffer the guillotine like so many aristocratic yeah. families did. And a group of them remember uh, Lafayette and Madison during the French Revolution. So they gather in this area, basically six families, and uh, they begin then to pull a priest in from Manhattan. Okay. From St. Peter's Church in Lower Manhattan on now, a monthly was it, basis. Was it a French priest? Um, mostly, yeah. Yeah. So that's the beginning in Madison. So by 1825, the Catholics in Madison build a little chapel. 
just down the street from where we are right now. Okay. Uh, then in 1829, the people up in West Milford finally erect a small rudimentary church building as well. And that parish is? St. Joseph's in West okay. Milford. Yeah. We, 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 yeah. And then the next one would be in 1845, and this would be St. Mary's in Dover. Okay. So you're beginning to get... Yes. Yeah. And uh, does St. Mary's in Dover have a priest coming? Yes. From? Basically, the priests in Madison um, began a, a wide-ranging itinerant mm, schedule. schedule. Yeah, uh, yeah. The routine, like in the 1840s in Madison, was uh, like an 8 o'clock mass in Madison, and then like a 10 o'clock mass in one of the outlying mission stations. And they would alternate. Like one Sunday it would be Dover, one Sunday Booton, one Sunday Morristown. Yeah. And they, are they riding in horses? Riding by horse, yes. On, on horses, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the oldest of those and the first one to be set loose is St. Mary's in Dover. So that by 1845, they now have their own priest up there. Okay. And so pretend this is the map of the diocese. You just gave us like four or five. Mm -hmm. So just, again, w w the, the sequence of Catholic communities was? Well, West Milford, if you count them as Father the Farmer, oldest, yeah. right. I always count them as the oldest. Yeah. Then S Patterson. Okay. Then Madison. Okay. Then Dover. Now, I... I was sure that you were going to mention St. Joe's and Mendham in this early group, but no. No. That doesn't We've come We've got a couple of other dots before okay. we get to Mendham. Okay. Um, can I just ask, uh, I don't know why this interests me, but the, the French families, do you know their names? Or, or some of them? Their names are very confusing because one family prevailed upon, they had no sons, so to preserve the name they convinced son-in-laws to change their name. Wow. You know, so it gets a little... Yeah. But there were um, uh, the Beauchamps, um, the Blanchets. Uh, Blanchets are still around. The yeah. Tabos. Okay. Um, a Tim Tabo? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, <laughs> no not Tebo, Tabo. Tabo. <laughs> okay. um, one of the Tabos actually will be one of the original five students at Seton Hall College. Interesting. And yeah. will later be the first alumnus of the seminary to be ordained a priest. Okay. And he comes from one of those original families. So they form, they form, you know, a nucleus in Madison. And they quickly outgrow that little chapel. Right. So then in 1839, they build a new church in Madison. Yes. Which is still standing. Okay. As a private residence. Interesting. I'd so love to see So if that. you go to 69 Ridgedale Avenue in Madison, Interesting. Uh, and you stand in front of it and you keep looking at it, sooner or later you'll notice that it's really a church. All right, so of those first five communities, are, are, um, are any of the buildings, are any of those original buildings... No. Okay. The only, the oldest buildings that we have in the diocese, the oldest would be the original part of St. Joseph's in Mendham. Okay. The, what is now the chapel, the Eucharistic chapel. Yes. So that goes back to the end of 1853. And then the second one would be... Um, our Lady of Mercy in Whippany. The little chapel there yes. is 1854. And then um, St. Bernard's in Mount Hope. That building goes back to the 1859-1860. And you could make a play for Mount Carmel and Booton, except that they've so enlarged that building over the years. But yeah, the original part is still there. You know, that was built basically during the Civil War. Yeah. So um, 
we're talking about buildings. Mm. Um, I, I don't want to just focus on buildings. I want to focus on the communities as well. Like yeah. what's going on with the Catholic population at this point? Growing slowly. Okay. By 1853, Catholicism had grown enough in the area that New Jersey was separated from New York and Philadelphia and made a separate diocese by itself, the Diocese of Newark, encompassing the whole state of New Jersey. And that was what year? 1853. 1853. Um, Basically, every time the American bishops got together in one of the councils of Baltimore, they would recommend to Rome know where we need a new diocese so when they got together in 1852 they recommended 10 spots so the following summer in July of 1853 Rome created 10 new dioceses across the country San Francisco Santa Fe in New Mexico territory Portland Oregon Portland Maine rather okay Burlington Vermont Erie Pennsylvania and Newark, New Jersey was one of the ten. And the first bishop of Newark? The first bishop of Newark is a convert, James Roosevelt Bailey. And when, when, A cousin of the two President Roosevelt's later on. Interesting. And a nephew of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Yes. So he converts. Uh, he is already an uh, Episcopal priest okay. and converts to Catholicism. And so the first bishop of these of three Jersey, counties. Yeah. yeah. Right. We're going to leave it there, um, and we'll continue to talk about the, the, the old faith in a new nation uh, the next time we get together. Let's leave it there. I want all of you who are listening or watching to make sure that you keep an eye out or an ear out for the next episode of Coffee with Cupkey. In order to stay on top of new releases, make sure you follow or subscribe wherever you're listening. And if you are on YouTube, please do drop a like and hit the bell for notifications. While you're at it, make sure to check out the other shows produced by the diocese. Those shows are Beyond the Beacon, hosted by Bishop Kevin Sweeney and Jay Agnish, our Director of Communications and the Paul Street Journal, hosted by Brian Hansberger and Freddie Garcia. I want to give a special thanks to Joe Genexi, our sound and visual engineer, Caitlin Ferrari, who's involved in pre- and post-production, and Freddie Garcia, who's helping out with this podcast in addition to doing his own. With all that said, I just want to thank you for joining us in uh, Coffee with Cupkey, keep making Catholic history in the Diocese of Patterson.